Hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. Welcome back to the Garage Chronicles. <laughs> and I'm going to thank John Freeman for that. He left that little thing in the comment section, and I thought it had a nice ring to it. So, what are we doing today? We got our new fuel pump. In a recent video, I was doing preventive maintenance on the car and found a, a, a loose fitting factory fitting that I couldn't repair on the fuel pump. It hadn't given me any problems up to that point, but I started searching for a new one and I wasn't having too much luck. Everything's a struggle. Oh, I see fuel coming out. That ain't good. Oh, that's my fuel pump. I hope that wasn't spraying out while I was driving. Holy crap! What is that? That's a Preston fitting. I just tore it out of the fuel pump. After about three days of checking the local auto parts stores, uh, not seeing the price I wanted, I think the lowest pressure one I saw was four to five pounds, and they could have ordered me something, but I had no idea what to order, and I came home and I was looking at my comments, and uh, AMC Wagoneer, recommended that I try a Carter fuel pump number P60430. So that's what I got right here. A Carter fuel pump. And there's the number. And here is the pump. And let's go put it on. It comes with uh, nice directions. Easy to read directions. And there's not much to it. Now this one attaches differently. It has these spade connectors right here, but it did come with a, a fuel filter to protect the pump from junk getting out of the tank, and I thought that was pretty cool. And it was less money. I think I paid like 33 or 35 dollars for this one. The cheapest one I saw at the local stores was 49.95, and it was four to five pounds pressure, which is too much for these dual barrel carburetors. Uh, Weber's and Delordo's, you don't want any more than three. I'm I'm just saying, okay? So, let's uh, let's take a look and see what we got going on here and get this puppy on the car. Now, the old one was sitting it was attached to this crossbar and it was a Mr. Gasket fuel pump and you can see the two holes down there where it uh, it mounted up and I used that as my ground but if you look a little bit higher there's my oil filter set up and not that I drive that this car that much or change the oil extra frequently or anything but that's not the uh, that's not what I want. I've decided to reconsider. It was very inconvenient for me to get up underneath there and get that old fuel pump off. I, I bet I struggled for a half hour and turned out I had a metric, the screws that came with it, one of them was a 10 millimeter. I couldn't see why the 7, seven six it was just difficult and a struggle and you know these things will always fail on you when the weather's bad or in the dark or some such thing so I'm going to experiment with a new possible location one of them that I considered is on the floor behind the seat down here but, but uh, although you can see it you're gonna have to practically pull the seat out if you have to remove the pump or do anything it almost be worth it to leave the old pump where it was and put in parallel the new pump but I don't want to do that either so I could find a different spot for the uh, oil filter but we've got quite a few oil lines here and uh, everything's so doggone pricey anymore I, I got it set up I, and I don't want to take up space on my package tray that was another option it's like okay get it up and about and then I thought well, what if I come this direction because I'm closer to my power supply, uh, starting motor and so forth is all on this side, and I thought, well, I don't know if I want gas spilling on my battery 
or any possibility of something weird going along you got a clamp loose a hose cracks you never know um, so I thought you know it's better to stay as far away as possible from the battery and the electrical and that's why my gas tank fill is on that side not that I want to do a rollover and get my head doused in gasoline but you know everything's life is a risk you know you could get killed walking across the street so you just gotta come up with something so I got an idea I want to try here uh, let me find, see if I have the parts to do it I was thinking about a u-bolt let me see what it looks like here I'm always amazed how I accumulate so much stuff and then a little project like this comes up and I don't have the right size well the general concept was to run this around the tubing and then attach the new pump with its clamp to the side down here with the ability to rotate that on the tube you can gain easier accessibility and I think it's light enough where I don't think it would shake loose and you have the little the little tab you'd probably uh, I might want to make a bigger cross piece out of something heavier or use two of them and then tighten this to the frame and then put another nut and capture it because it's got that um, it's got that side tab to mount it an insulated side tab so I don't know I'm only suggesting it this is not my final decision it may end up where it was but I'm just trying to get your gears turning so that if you have a similar situation you might get an idea from what I'm doing Whoever put that on with rivets is not likely to vibrate loose, and all you have to do is just drill through the head of it to get it to come loose. And this drill bit is not big enough. Gotta bleed. Nothing gets done without blood offerings. <laughs> oh. I can't seem to do anything without bleeding. So I'm gonna put this blood to good use and wipe it on the new pump. Yeah, I got some on there. Okay, so what I came up with, I took the regulator, fuel regulator bracket off. It was pop riveted on. And so the electrical points here, the terminals, are not directly underneath the oil filter. And I have easier side access from the top rather than struggling with it the way I was before. I think I will keep this uh, pre-filter. It's grimy looking, but it really probably hasn't been on there all that long. And I noticed there's not a clamp on this side and the clamp that was on this side is loose and I mean it just the hose came right off so that's probably why this junk is on there 
it's probably been leaking and this is a, a Bosch number I don't know if you could see it there 4509050002 Bosch makes no difference but you know those little plastic ones that are so popular that so many of us use the thing I like about those little plastic ones is they have that transition so you can go from a quarter inch line to a 5 16th line and get an easier connection because there's no way a quarter inch is going to go on those fittings and then you know you know what I mean Gene so yeah this is going to be looking like this. I'm going to see if I can get a bicycle inner tube or something to fit around this filter. And then I'll use the old mounting holes on the bottom there and put a nylon tie wrap to pull it up. And I've still got to, uh, I'll probably use that mounting bolt for the ground as well. Yeah. And then here's my... Uh, uh, entry point to the carburetor so it's high and away from the exhaust might just work out for that one guy who's gonna leave that comment I just know it I run a stock pump and I don't have no problems good for you good for you I used to do that too but I changed to electric and I'm not going back and the number one reason that I switched to electric because I got one of those later engine blocks on an AS21 case, my 1800, and it didn't have the hole. It was fuel injected case. And so in that particular situation, I had to go with an electric fuel pump on the Baja if I wanted to run that engine. When I bought the car, it had an electric one that was too high a pressure. So I switched it out for a low pressure one, added the regulator, and rebuilt that engine a little bit bigger, and that's what I did. So I wanted to, I wanted to try that engine in another car. So of course I needed an electric fuel pump to follow that engine in my different vehicles. Um, not only that, years ago I used to run a center mount fan shroud, and there wasn't any room for uh, a stock style fuel pump. And with dual carburetors, that means you got to come all the way around the back center of the engine and then head back over to the carburetor and you got an extra fuel line flop in there and you got carburetor linkage and things in the way. And I've had problems uh, with the new fuel pumps, the replacement pumps that you get now. The uh, little hinge pin on, the, on the, the rod goes up and down on that lever and there's a spring and a hinge pin there. And it worked for a while and all of a sudden my car stopped and I figured it out finally after putzing with it for a long time. And uh, the doggone pump wasn't pumping because the hinge pin was busted inside there. Go figure. So that's why I like electric fuel pumps. How many, what, since the 80s we've been running fuel injection and using electric fuel pumps? I know very few people who have had fuel pump problems in a stock automobile. So I don't know. There you have it. If if you gotta be a, a Volkswagen nut in uh, old school, more power to you, buddy. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we got it all hooked up. We're gonna turn on the power and purge the air out of the line. Wow, that's a lot of flow. Now, I've got a fuel, an accurate fuel gauge. And I'm going to connect this to the carburetor. And pray that it's uh, the correct pressure. Guys, when you're working with gas in the garage, be safe. You know? Okay, pump is on. This looks like just about three pounds. Whoo! And I gotta take this apart and tighten it up. Then we'll fire it up. Man. I 
I think we'll be okay with that. We're going to find out. And once again, I want to thank uh, AMC Wagoneer for leaving the information for this Carter fuel pump number P60430. That's what this community is about. That's what my channel is about. Showing people what I'm doing, learning from you. Uh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a collective thing. And uh, I'm loving it. I am loving it. So now, put this on. Tighten her down. This is one of the clamps, I believe, that came with that fuel pump. It does come with everything you need. It's got mounting hardware, uh, bolts, electrical connections, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good call. I could maybe still put a regulator on it, but that other one was a piece of junk. And the more stuff you can do without, parts that aren't there never break, <laughs> right? So we got that connected up to our junction block. The pump is on right now and running. I can't hear it. It's got this rubber mounted clamp. Uh, the terminals are here on the end. I made my ground strap just a little bit long and came back and captured it after I tightened down the clamp and then I make it that's my ground connection and I use a nylock nut to capture that um, easy access easy from the top um, I don't think you have to worry about the weather of course you don't have to worry about the clamp because it's uh, just going around rubber it's not to anything so if something were to come loose and touch that clamp that's no biggie um, and I guess it's just gonna have to prove itself the test of time uh, for the oil filter uh, by putting it here if I do lose some oil when I'm changing my filter it's not gonna get on any electrical connections or anything like that and I think I'll just probably take a, a bag or something put on it the inlet filter that it came with I took a bicycle inner tube and wrapped it around that and used the old mount mounting holes from the old pump to kind of secure it, make sure it's rigid and not flopping around since this only has one mounting screw, the other one had two. And this is going to be on rough roads occasionally. So then we come down to this end. The inlet side of the filter was 3 8 and you're on the suction side of the pump and it was a booger to get that hose on there don't gob a bunch of grease on there and then have it clogging up your filter and stuff it probably would break down but um, anyhow it, it was a, a hard push fit to get that over that 3 8 nipple with this 5 16 hose this is new 5 16 fuel line then I went ahead uh, and I left my old filter on there just because um, the sacrificial filter, uh, yeah, no big deal. One way or the other, filters, filters, and I'm not worried about the extra weight in this particular car. So, yeah, I think, I think that's a wrap. So, I'm pleased with the way this turned out. And my supervisor here, <laughs> my supervisor, she is... not told me anything one way or the other are you satisfied with the job ma'am <laughs> huh you want to go for a ride I don't know that we're gonna do that today thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out don't forget to like hit the thumbs up yeah here's a shot of the old pump it's uh Mr. Gasket and here's the port that pulled out and I was just inspecting it a little closer I took the clamp and cut the hose because the hose was old and hard and I <laughs> look at that it just it just comes right out it's got these uh, splines on them but it does have an o-ring there and if you work with it 
Well, maybe it's swelling up now. I had it in and out. But that's not something I want on a rough riding off-road car. I do not understand that. And it has some sort of a check valve or filter device. I got it back in once. And it sort of felt like it popped in and came to rest. <laughs> 